So, hello. I am glad that you all made it to this wonderful session. That is a shared session from the It's Learning community. And I'm very pleased that I have today some uh, contributors here in that session from the city of Bremen. Hello to everyone. Hello, Oliver, Serena, Mario. Um, we have just come out of some sessions from the product owners of It's Learning. That uh, second session is meant to be hosted by users by our community and we have today the very good situation that we have with Oliver, someone who is a project manager in the city of Bremen. So he is running the every every details of the it's learning implementation in the city of Bremen, so to say, and also Serena and Mario are um, supporting him and they have quite, you could say a double role, maybe you also have some other roles and you may want to introduce yourself a bit later, but um, Mario and Serena are also working at the school and at the same time they are also consulting other schools in the city of Bremen to help out. Today in that session you are going to present us uh, some things from your practice and how you managed to have uh, many teachers who came along its learning during the corona pandemic and how that will also lead to quality. That will be most likely my question in the end of that session. Um, before I hand it over to you, Oliver, to start, do you want me to launch the question or should I just hand it over now? Um, just launch, launch the question. I think it's um, it's good to start with a, with a little survey, with a little question. Yeah, we thought about a question for you so that you don't fall asleep. I hope you I hope you have also some coffee with you and I just will launch the first question to you for you now. Maybe Oliver you want to explain the question a bit? Yeah, um, I think everybody can um, can think that um, the login numbers and the, um, the people using its learning in Bremen have incre increased due to the closed schools and I would like to ask you, what do you think? Um, how much have the numbers increased? Are they three times higher than before, five times, 10 times, or even more than 10 times? Um, I try to provide a solution in the end, or within my, my, my brief introduction. So I can see that 60% uh, of you have already made your choice, so there's a bit room for improvement. So I ask everybody to make uh, your vote or participate in the poll. Okay, so I hope you have made your choice and I will show you the result. Wow. So 39% of you have said that even more than 10 times higher was the usage. 25% said the usage must have been higher, uh, 10 times higher, and 32% said five times higher. But nearly nobody believed it is uh, just three times higher than before. So maybe you want to explain how it was in reality. Yeah, our numbers were pretty great before. Um but I'll try to give you the answer in my short introduction. Um, shall I, right. I sh shall shall make I you the Yes, I make you the presenter and then we will be listening to you. And a note also, if you have uh, questions out there in the meantime, you can, during the next uh, presentation time, we will have this now for around 25 minutes or half hour. So you can already post some questions that you may have in this time in the uh, text chat, but uh, you can also uh, be happy for the discussion that we have later. So keep your question maybe, and we will have a discussion with each other. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, as Peter mentioned, um, I'm the project manager of the, of the um, learning management system in, in the small uh, city state of Bremen. Bremen is the smallest federal state in Germany, for those of you who don't know. And therefore, our chain of command is pretty short, and that helped us a lot in this pandemic. And even before, um, where we introduced its learning in Bremen, and um, 
we um, started to use its learning as a learning management system in 2014. And we had lots of time. And normally um, on, on events like this, I am I'm often asked to present how we implemented a learning management system for every teacher and every student um, in, a, in, a, in a small state like Bremen. But let's face it, uh, these aren't normal times and nobody has six years to implement a system. And therefore, um, I just have a brief introduction how we did it and how it turned out um, due to schools closing and the pandemic hitting in Germany and the world. Um, and therefore, I, I brought you a small presentation. I'm very happy that I have Serena and Mario with me because um, they are the experts in using its learning in the schools. Um, I'm only the guy in the background who has um, no uh, expertise in teaching. And therefore, I try to um, I try to keep it short, keep it quick. Um, the usage of its learning is, and I, I put in brackets, was completely voluntary in Bremen because it's about to change now. It's um, we provided iPads to every teacher, and uh, even to we are about to to provide iPads to every student in Bremen, and um, therefore the. The teachers' union asked uh, us to to make uh, the usage of its learning and the usage of email and all the other th things mandatory because they um, they saw for themselves that that it helps in times of of homeschooling or schooling um, in um, not in schools um, than in other places. Um, the list that's the institute where I work. Um, implemented a support team to help the schools. They, we, we implemented this support team uh, with, a, with the launch of its learning in 2014. And um, it exists of 10 wonderful teachers who um, provide support to the schools um, in, in, in small amounts. Um, they work like five hours a week for the, for the institute. And in the other times they are quite normal teachers in school. Um, from day one, there was a dedicated course designed to support the colleagues. Um, and almost 50% of all teachers in Bremen signed up for this course um, until 2019. This number increased dramatically um, due to um, in 2020, um, for reasons everybody knows. Um, and this course literally saved us because Therefore, we had an easy way to communicate to all the teachers and to to launch our support program for all the all the teachers um, who, yeah, who jumped into the water and had to use um, its learning for the first time when the schools closed. Um, this is one one hint, one tip from us. If you're planning on on engaging teachers. Um, have a dedicated course for communication and for support. No, my own, okay. Uh, the diffusion rates, as I mentioned before, um, of its learning have been very satisfying even before COVID-19. Um, in the five years, we had, a, we had a, an increasing number of users every year. I brought, a, I brought some small charts for you to show how the numbers increased. Um, and one of our, secrets of our success was um, that every school had uh, that the teachers could implement the platform within their uh, within their own pace and potential it means some schools um, rushed forward and um, implemented its learning for everybody and some schools said oh we need time we just try it out with the teachers before we we get the students involved in the platform and then as everybody knows, on March 13, 2020, our local government announced the closing of our schools due to the increasing infection rates. And um, we, yeah, we had we had problems, and this was um, a huge, uh, a huge problem and a huge challenge for us. And um, Peter uh, posted a question: How the Numbers increased, and you said more than 10 times. Let's take a look. These are the implementation rates um, from 2015. The, st the statistics uh, start in June 2015. Therefore, this year isn't, um, isn't quite significant for the statistics. 
But then in 2016, 17, you can see the numbers are increasing pretty well. And we are um, counting log-ins in its learning. That's our, um, our money for statistics. And you can see in 2019, we had uh, two and a half million log-ins. Um, and the, the colors mean that the blue color means that the students are logged in and the green is the teachers. And this was part of our implementation process. We, we started with the teachers and the students came almost by themselves because the teachers started using it and then the, the, the students came after them. And then um, there was 2020 and the numbers were like this. I think this is quite impressive um, how it increased. And you can see in the, in the next two charts, it's about between seven times and 10 times more than before. This is a normal month, a regular month before the schools were closed. And we had um, we were very, very proud that the numbers um, of logins in one day were about 25,000 throughout Bremen and Bremerhaven. Um, this is, uh, we have about 100,000 students and about three uh, 7,000 teachers. And therefore, if you look at elementary schools who are um, not using its learning so much and, or who haven't been using its learning um, so much, these numbers were pretty satisfying for us. But now I have a, a month, yeah, here 25,000. Now I have a month in to the schools closing and you can see it's, yeah, it's almost eight, nine, 10 times higher on every day. And this was a huge challenge. But even today, even in, in, in this month, the schools in Germany are um, opened again. The, um, the schools are working pretty normal under the, under the given circumstances. But even today with open schools, we have about 140,000 um, logins every day. This isn't so much less than before. As you can see, it's 200,000 and it's a 140,000. If you're wondering why the numbers are so low from 10th of October to 24th of October, those are the um, so-called autumn holidays in Germany and in the holidays. But even in the holidays, the numbers are as high as before the pandemic. I think it's pretty impressive. Now um, to, to get it over to Mario and Serena with, uh, with important stuff, um, we thought of um, what, what could we do to support thousands of kind of new users because, as I said, the elementary schools weren't using its learning um, so much and they all had to provide, um, provide uh, something to the students and to, to communicate to the students. And this dramatic increase of users were a huge challenge for our support team. And um, to close my little um, presentation, I brought you a little story because on March 12th, one day prior to announcing that the schools are closing, I received a phone call from the spokesman of our Minister of Education. And she said, Ma'am Oliver, just hypothetically, what do you think um, you could do to help the colleagues if we had to close the schools from Monday on? And I was like, oh yeah, um, that's a challenge. Um, then I, I called our team and the team started right away. On, in, at 11 o'clock, everybody was here in our institute and we literally worked till late at night to offer some kind of first aid and some kind of first support. And um, that's what Mario is uh, showing you right now. Um, it's a little bit unfair because um, we, uh, English is not our mother tongue, as you, as you noticed uh, with me. And um, Mario is, isn't also an its learning expert. He's also an English teacher. And that's why it's a bit unfair. But now to good English and to interesting stuff with Mario Vavarikas. All yeah, right. thank you, Oliver. Do you want Either. me to let me know if you want the question now or later? No, bring it up now. Great. Maybe you want to say one word about yourself first. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Oliver. Uh, my name is Mario Vavarikis. I'm a 
Uh, I'm a teacher for English and student, uh, as well as part of the, this incredible team Oliver just talked about. And um, yes, I'm pretty grateful to be here. And uh, also, I'm happy to be in this uh, seminar today. So hopefully I can tell you some interesting stuff as well. Yes, and the question that's leading over to my part is, uh, how do you estimate the competence level of teachers at your school or district in terms of using an LMS, a learning, a learning management system? Um, and it would be really interesting for us to know what about your very uh, places and situations. So we have nearly 70% of you who have voted already. It's maybe a hard question, sometimes hard in life to make a decision. All right, so we have nearly around 75% of you who have voted. So let's look at the result. The result is that just 20% said it will be most likely very low, medium is 63% of you, and high 17%. So I'll hand over to Mario's screen now so that you can maybe. Mm -hmm continue and maybe have a word or we just let it let this image think sink down now are you able All to right. share your screen um yeah i should be able to do that can you see my presentation yes all right. So um, before we get to the level of competences, uh, we thought of um, the percentage of colleagues who actually who are actually adept at working with an, uh, a learning management system or its learning in specific. And um, so uh, the question or the answer to this question is definitely. Uh, when you look at that. So before the pandemic, as Oliver said, um, there was still a big amount of people or uh, colleagues who challenged the tenets and additional value of an online-based learning management system. Uh, and I'd say four out of 10 colleagues might have given it a shot, but even fewer would have used it on a daily basis uh, due to an unsatisfactory technical infrastructure at most uh, schools. And even more important for the disapproval was the complexity of its learning. And even though it offers great ways to organize school in many different ways, um, I think it's okay to say that the access, or let's call it initial, uh, initial engagement with the platform uh, is not that user-friendly in terms of intuition. And for somebody who has, uh, who has no distinctive interest in media, apart from maybe uh, Facebook or uh, the news, it seemed uh, out of all reason to put private time into it to learn the ropes of a completely new work and environment, uh, just to teach their classes the way they always did the next morning anyway. Um, yeah, but then COVID-19 overran the planet, and within days, our team had to find a way how to motivate and help all of those people at once instead of doing what we were actually doing until then, which is given workshops for teachers at school and train them uh, on site. Uh, so we decided to break the overall package into small pieces and offer short tutorials. Um, so every user could work in their own pace and get into it step by step. So this is what we did. Uh, ah, by the way, the, this doesn't only de-demonize, yeah, 
this this was our thought so it wouldn't only de demonize something new because a short video is uh, a sh short video of maximum 10 minutes is by far not as deterrent as a 90 minutes lecture uh, but also gives the subject the choice of what is most important for them uh, at that very moment and I think that can be very motivating for most people. Um, okay, so no sooner said than done, we quickly agreed on a useful course of action and started recording, uh, as Oli just told you, uh, which is, truth to be told, um, for somebody who daily works um, with a platform, quite a challenge since you have to think in very, very small steps. Um, okay, so we... Um, thought of uh, a way how to how to actually show this to the people and um, we decided on uh, something called the it's learning 101 um, the basics and um, we like I said the course of structure was to um, start very very in small steps so this means we started with um, creating a course uh, inviting people into this course um, also inviting uh, uh, students into this course, uh, like, okay, okay, once again, once again, creating the course, inviting people to this course, um, providing material through the course, um, how to use the, the messenger function, and then uh, we try to uh, evaluate how, uh, what needs to come up next, and yeah, then we decided um, uh, the the upcoming steps but it's important to say that um, most of our all of these videos were um, maximum and you can see that actually when you take a close look uh, uh, the maximum amount of time was I think 78 minutes or something like that so um, the response was overwhelming and hundreds hundreds of teachers watched our tutorials within the very first days of the lockdown and since our first videos not only address uh, sorry since our videos only address teachers um, the next step was to create an equivalent for students um, even cooler was to our all surprise that a student offered us to uh, do that as well which helped us a lot since changing into a student's perspective felt even more difficult for uh, most of us. And I think it's fair to say that this young man totally outshone uh, our whole team, uh, not only language-wise, but also with this very authentic approach. And I just want to show you that. Mm, so this is what he did. He, um, these are screenshots. Uh, this was his first video where he, um, explained his fellow students how to uh, use Zofa Tutor, that's uh, an implementation um, which uh, which gives uh, um, uh, little tutorials on, on a huge variety on sub of, of subjects and he basically explained how to get there, how to use that and uh, he always mentioned both approaches so not only via uh, the computer, but also via uh, mobile phone. And another video was uh, the difference between tasks and assignments. And once again, always uh, looking at the different approaches as well. And I have to say this, this, this young fellow, he was incredible and still is, and he's doing a great job and that helped us a lot. Um, yeah, the more people watched, the more specific questions came up. And uh, may the offer of tutorials respond to some people. There are still many out there who want to be guided or trained directly, which is, by the way, uh, absolutely understandable and legitimate. And uh, that's when we came up with uh, the idea of web seminars or webinars uh, on specific topics. Uh, we bundled related topics, uh, usually three per seminar, and send out invitations for Zoom meetings. Uh, at that moment, we had a, um, a premium account, I think, for up to 100 partic participants and never actually had the shred of a doubt that this number could be reached. Um, reality proved us wrong and we had to turn down even more uh, 
more than 50 colleagues at the very first session uh, who actually wanted to attend the seminar. And um, yeah, at that moment, we uh, actually, we, we, we um, didn't really troubleshoot that very problem, but um, this brought us to the, to the solution to actually record those webinars. So um, that allowed us to upload the videos afterwards. Um, and this is what it looked like. Uh, we always uh, started with the whole team and said hi. Um, and we um, uh, and then uh, and then started on uh, with talking on different topics uh, with uh, with yeah like experts. Um, side note: one way of proceeding uh, proceeding sorry, well, uh, which has proven to be very very helpful was to add information to the video in terms of subtopics and timestamps, as you can see. Um, this allows people to really look uh, at what they're searching for without A, having to watch the whole video, um, and B, running the risk of missing out in, uh, important relation, related information through fast forwarding the video. Um, yeah, like I said, this would always be the starting uh this the the that's that's what it always started with and then like for example this seminar uh, i think it was serena who will talk after me um uh she gave an introduction into tests and that was so that was so amazing i still remember the um brilliant feedback she got we got for that and many, many more webinars we offered. All in all, I think we've held seven uh, or yeah, seven meetings um, between March and the end of June. So till uh, the summer break, um, we had up to seven meetings, recorded meetings with hundreds of attendees. And that sounds a little bit, um, I don't want to brag here, not at all, but it was a huge amount of uh, colleagues of people who were interested in that. And that is, of course, important for us as well, because it shows us that we're not um, doing this for nothing, that actually that, that people care about our work. And I think um, the result speaks for itself. The numbers of active users multiplied by eight within six months or even more. Um, and uh, if there wasn't a forbiddance for gatherings right now in Germany, I think we would be giving workshop, workshops for advanced users every day. And um, yet there are more ways of killing a dog than by hanging it. <laughs> That's just a proverb, of course. I'm not, I know, not, not to be taken literally in this case. Or in other words, there's just one way of delving into the depths of its learning. And this is where I'm uh, handing over to my dear colleague Serena uh, asking you, is there a way to work one's way into the manifoldness of its learning without contravening the rules of social distance right now, apart from the ways that I just presented? Serena, what do you say? So thank you, Mario. Um, maybe we can uh, ask the question to, to you, um, Peter. Yeah, there we go. So, mm -hmm. Just so uh, what learning methods uh, do you think? Um, I can see the whole question. Uh, I hope everybody can see it, but I can read it for you. What learning mm -hmm. methods do you think help best to develop digital competencies? And you can, in this case, you can choose multiple ones. So one option is text or image tutorials, another one is video tutorials, web seminar or webinars, on-site training or any other kind of uh, methods. So make your choice now, please. Huh. This time it's even a higher participation, over 80% of you have voted already. Very good. So it's a very good indicator that this webinar is not boring. 
<laughs> okay, so I shut I shut it, and then we can look at the result. That's the results. Forty percent said text image tutorials. Video tutorial is very high, eighty-seven percent. Web seminar is also quite high, sixty percent. But on-site training even more again, and others just thirteen. And I forgot, Serena, you may also want to say a word about yourself before you start continuing. Up to you. I will yes, also okay. make you the. So. Um... Yeah, um, hello, my name is Irina and um, I am uh, really looking forward to tell you um, about our project, The Self-Learning Path 2020. So um, this is my first talk in English and I'm a bit nervous. I'm not an English teacher like Mario, but I'm a teacher for German and mathematics and I work with Oliver at the Media Center in Bremen. And as I told you, I would like to tell you something about the project Self-Learning Path. So now I um, try to share my screen. So can you see my presentation now? Yes, 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 yes we can okay. see it. So um, as I said, I'm a bit nervous. Um, I hope you don't mind if I say something wrong or if I'm not able to respond so quickly to your questions. But um, here we go, let's start. Um, the self-learning path uh, 2020. So what was the starting point? Um, since um, 2018, every teacher trainee uh, in Bremen um, gets a training in using its learning at the beginning of the teacher training. It is um, the Referendariat, as we call it in Germany. And the referendariat takes place after graduation from university. It takes one and a half year and it prepares the new teachers to teach in school. So twice a year, the new teachers are trained in workshops by us, the It's Learning team. And, um, but um, as you can imagine, in 2020, everything is a bit different um, due to the pandemic. So, um, this uh, media talk um, or media day um, took place uh, completely online for the very first time. So um, that's why we had to come up with something for the It's Learning workshops for 180 new teachers. And that was when the idea of the self-learning path was born. So, um, Mario told you um, earlier how we started recording many videos or video tutorials for the teachers in March and April. And we have found that this is a good way how we can show teachers in distance the basics of its learning. But um, by now, there were far too many videos. And now, we um, had to choose which videos are most important for new users, especially in Bremen. So um, we have chosen 12 basic functions that we find most important in Bremen. And um, this includes, uh, for example, the assignment, um, the test, the task, um, the page, the survey, and um, other basics but um, also basics for communication and how to create a course in its learning. And um, there are things in its learning that we believe only exist in Bremen. For example, cooperation with Sofa Tutor. So um, after the 12 steps um, were clear, we um, distributed them in the team and put them in put them in a meaningful order. So here you see um, the resource uh, learning path plus 12 steps. And um, each step is um, a short video that takes um, only two um, to five minutes. And um, then you get a task to try out what you saw in the video right away. I will show you an example. 
Um, this is the third step. It is a two minute video here about communication. And this is the task. I can translate it for you. It is um, watch the video. Hopefully you've already created um, your own course. Post a message in your course on the overview page. Then write a message to a colleague of your choice. And all the 12 steps looked like this. So um, after the 12 steps were recorded, we also recorded a welcome message because um, we couldn't see the teacher trainees in person. And um, now I would like to show you this message so you can get to know not only Mario, Oli and me, but the whole team. So Peter, can you show the message? Yes, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Hallo und ein herzliches Willkommen. Wir sind das It's Learning Team des Zentrums für Medien. Wir unterstützen euch bei allen Fragen rund um It's Learning, iPad und Lernsoftware und Fragen, die ihr im Forum stellt. Wir besuchen euch vor Ort in euren Schulen, geben Webseminare und Fortbildungen und haben für euch diesen Selbstlernpfad erstellt, mit dem wir euch nun viel Spaß wünschen. Auf bald! Tschüss. 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 Okay, thank you. Okay, I hope we are back in my presentation. So the first thing um, the uh, teacher trainee saw was this welcome message. And after that, um, they uh, could see the 12 tasks in this uh, self-learning path. Um, and The last step of, of the um, self-learning path is congratulations, uh, you have finished the Selbstlernfahrt 2020. And if you want to find out more, you can view our webinars on various topics here. And um, these are the webinars uh, Mario told you about. So um, they could uh, learn something more on a specific topic. And at this point, we um, uh, uh, they could find a link uh, to the online webinars in our um, It's Learning Library. Okay, the special thing about the self-learning path was the organization within the media day. Um, we thought that a beginner in its learning would usually take about two hours to complete all the tasks. But um, however, some of them have already worked in a school in Bremen before and so they would need much less time and um, others have very little experience with learn management systems and um, may want to watch the video several times before trying something on themselves so um, we gave a total of four hours for the self-learning path and um, there was still enough time for a lunch break so this is um, the uh, media day and here is uh, the self-learning path that's um, and the four hours. Okay, um, whether you worked with its learning for the first time on this day or um, if you already have a lot of experience with learn management systems, um, we are sure that you certainly have many questions about um, um, after completing the 12 steps. So um, before starting the learning path, we asked the teachers or the teacher trainees to write down all these questions. And um, after the four hour trial, we invited um, all 180 new teachers to an online webinar. Um, first to get uh, to know the it's learning team, as well as uh, to answer their questions. And um, This was um, a completely new experience also for us as a trainer, um, because um, the um, trial wasn't limited to a specific time, but uh, they could uh, take as long as they needed to finish the tasks 
so four hours, but um, it's a very long time. And at the end of the media day, um, we um, did a survey to find out how the teacher trainees experienced this day. And as you can see, uh, we have a number um, of 100 out of um, 180 response. So um, I want to show you some re results in detail from this evaluation. And, um, oh, there's something in. Can you still see my uh, screen? Um, yes, we can see it. Okay, and the first thing was um, with the learning path, I got a good overview of the possibilities of its learning. And as you can see the um, green section and the blue section um, says, I highly agree and I agree. Uh, next one, um, I feel comfortable enough to use its learning directly with my students. And um, I think this is a very interesting answer here. Um, the green screen is, uh, section is um, very high, but um, the blue section is the highest, and that's really good. Um, the next one is, um, is uh, even without an on-site event, the learning path worked well. See, I highly agree and I agree. And the last one, my questions about its learning were answered in the final question time. So um, this was the final uh, webinar that um, took place um, after the four hours. Okay, so um, what's next? Um, because the self-learning path was um, so successful, on this uh, day at the beginning of September, um, we have considered that not only new teachers should benefit from it, but all teachers in Bremen. All teachers who want to learn the basics of its learning or want to rediscover it. So um, we have changed small parts of the course and published it in the course catalog. And um, now, two months later, uh, there are not uh, 180 teachers in this course, but 450 and seven teachers. Um, ah, yeah, and um, so um, in the future, we would like to offer webinars um, with question time several times a year on the self-learning path. So. Um, uh, that uh, new users are able to ask questions about the 12 steps so that um, um, I think um, on the one hand uh, the participants are not left alone um, and uh, there is still an op opportunity to ask questions and to get feedback and on the other hand uh, they have the flexibility um, of self-education whenever and wherever they want and um, I would like to end with uh, one of my favorite answers from the survey I showed earlier. Um, this, um, der Medientag soll in Zukunft auch online durchgeführt werden. So erfolgt direkt eine Mediennutzung und die Entdeckung der Bandbreite von its learning. But I can translate it for you. <laughs> this, um, in the future, the media day should also be held online. Um, then uh, media usage and the discovery of the bandwidth of its learning takes place directly. So um, thank you for your attention and um, I'm looking forward to answering your questions now about the self-learning path.